Before we get into the tutorial, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. I use Boombox.io every day to collect production notes and feedback from my mixing clients. Let me show you how this works. After finishing a mix, I create a new project. Then I upload my audio. You can even batch upload multiple files at once. Then I invite my clients, collaborators, or bandmates. They join the project and leave timestamped mixing feedback for me. Then I take this feedback and make a new mix revision. But instead of creating an entirely new project, I can just create a new version within the existing project. I upload the new audio and wait for additional feedback. If you want to check this out for yourself, head over to boombox.io and sign up today to get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 18 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. As we wrap up the Logic Pro Essentials portion of this series, I want to touch on a really helpful recording technique called loop recording. Well, technically it's called cycle recording because you can use the cycle range to loop your recording playback. So basically what you do is you set the cycle range where you want it, and then you hit record. And then when you're done with the take, you just let the playhead loop back around to the front of the cycle range. It stores the take in a take folder, and then you just play another take. And you just repeat this process of looping your recording until you're satisfied with your recording, or you can go down into the take folder and comp together the best parts of each take. So I find this really helpful for recording guitar leads and solos, or if you're trying to work through a difficult passage, or even for tracking vocal takes. So for this video, I'm gonna be using this to record some guitar solo takes. Now there is a little setup we have to do up front, but it's very easy to do. So first you're gonna go up to Logic Pro Settings or Preferences, then go down to Recording, and from here under Overlapping Track Recordings, you wanna make sure that Cycle On audio is set to create take folder. Now another optional project setting can be accessed here under recording project settings. And this is to automatically colorize takes. So what this will do is it'll colorize each take or each region within the take folder as a different color automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. This was something I didn't show in my take folders or quick swipe comping videos. So this doesn't have to be used just for cycle recording. This can be used for just regular take folder recording as well. Okay, so for me, I want to record a solo that starts here at bar 11 and ends at bar 19. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my cycle range from 11 to 19, but I wanna give myself a bit of sort of pre-roll or a little prep beforehand, as well as some post-roll afterward. So what I'm gonna do is drag the end of the cycle range out to bar 21 to give me two extra bars at the end, and then I'm gonna give myself one bar of sort of lead in to the solo. And by the way, if you want your cycle range to snap to the bar like that, just simply turn on your bar snap and make sure you're on absolute value. So now all I have to do is hit R to record and start playing in my solo takes. So I'll do about three or four takes depending on how these turn out. I have nothing prepared, this is just pure improv off the top of my head, so bear with me.
That was a pretty bad take, so I'm going to do one more. Okay, so none of those takes were really great. I'm just sort of improvising on the fly here. Uh, one thing I want to show you before I get into comping or editing these takes is how to increase the waveform zoom, especially with lead guitar. Sometimes the waveform can look really small because I'm not adding any gain on input. So what I can do is click right here, and this will increase the waveform zoom. You can also click and hold and you can sort of variably adjust this. So I like to pull this up a bit just so I can see the waveform a bit better. However, this has nothing to do with the gain of the recording. It's simply just a zoom function. Okay, so as I said before, if you turn on that colorize feature, it'll automatically colorize each take. So you can see take one, two, three, and four, and you can select them and use quick swipe comping to create a composite take. So what I'm gonna do is off screen, I'm going to do a little editing in my take folder and create a nice sounding composite take, and I'll be right back. Okay, so off screen, I did some comping of these guitar solo takes. If you're not familiar with quick swipe comping in Logic, I highly recommend you go back and watch part 14 of this series for an overview of how to properly use quick swipe comping to create composite takes. So let's give this a listen. I'm mostly using take one and take four with a couple small parts from take two and take three. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best way to do things for guitar solos, piecing things together like this. Typically, what I'll do is with guitar solos, I'll play like 30 takes. And eventually, over the course of playing those 30 takes, a solo will start to emerge from the repetition and the muscle memory I'm forming by playing 30 takes. So by the end, I'm maybe just comping together two or three takes of 30 to make a nice solo or lead part. That's the way I do things. So this can certainly be a helpful compositional tool as well as a recording function. The demo project for this video will be available as a free download below in the video description if you wanna check that out and you want to practice comping guitar solos, I'll just leave it just like this so you can go into the take folder and try comping the guitar lead for yourself. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.